Howdy guys. Okay, so in this lecture what we're going to do is focus on getting the base shape in place for our pumpkin. Okay, and this is really just going to require us to create, you know, some starter shape. Alright, so let's go take a look inside of Houdini. Okay, so what we need to do first is uh, drop down a geometry node because this is going to contain our pumpkin and all of its awesomeness. So what I'm going to do is call this the well, I'm going to call it IP Pumpkin, or let's call it Jack-O-Lantern. Jack-O-Lantern to get into the whole festive theme here. And I'm going to say this is a creator. I keep going back and forth on what I'm going to call those things. All right, so let me actually turn off the, the test version there. All right, and so what I want to do is jump inside of here. And there's a couple of ways you could actually approach this. So you could start from, you know, a sphere like so. All right. And uh, if I turn on my wireframe, currently we have a primitive. You could turn this to a polygon, or actually I should say a polygon mesh. And you could control it from this aspect right here. All right, but what we'd have to do is go and squash this and stuff. And so for this particular example, what I'm going to do is actually create a, a curve. And this is going to become our profile over here. All right, so let's just call this our profile, like so. And I'm going to go and switch into the uh, front view by hitting three on the keyboard. All right. And what I want to do is I want to basically create half my pumpkin shape. If I were to look straight onto it from an orth orthogonal standpoint here, I want to create just that half shape. All right. So what I'm going to do is hit uh, enter on the keyboard and I'm going to come up here and start to create, you know, some really rough shape. And I'd say keep this really, really rough at this point because we can go and resample all this stuff later. All right, we can move it around too. At this point, whenever you're creating your procedural models, I like to get all my components in place first before I go and really refine the, the shape because it is procedural. We can come back to any step in our graph and actually update it without really destroying a lot of the downstream notes. All right, so with my shape all drawn out, I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard there and hit one on the keyboard to go back into my perspective view. And there we go. So now I have half of my pumpkin right here very cool and so what I'm going to do is actually drop down a clip node you'll notice that I drew the end points of the curve let me go back to that front view I drew the end points of the curve just past the center line on the y direction and so what I can do with this clip node all right if I hit enter with the clip node selected over here if I hit enter in the scene view over here you can see that there's this plane and this plane basically defines what we're going to clip and so what I want to do is point this in the X direction or that little red line right there. All right, so I'm going to do that and that, and look at that. It clips it perfectly right on the Y axis there. Pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to hit escape to get out of the clip node and I'm going to hit one on the keyboard to go back into perspective view. All right, so let's turn on our component display, our point display and our point numbers and take a look at what we got. All right, look at that. So now we have a pretty cool curve. So let's go and actually uh, resample this. So I'm going to resample this guy like so. And what I like to do is put this onto subdivision curves. Very cool. All right. So that's working out pretty good for me right there. So at this point, I need to create the actual, you know, sweep, if you will. And now you might be saying to yourself, why don't we just use a, a revolve and not a resample? We want a revolve. All right. So I'm going to drop down a revolve node. That totally does it for us, but you're going to encounter problems trying to UV this. All right. So if I hit five on the keyboard, you can see we don't have any UVs first off. And in all my tests and stuff like that, creating this pumpkin, um, it became quite difficult to maintain the UVs if I were to create them earlier. So uh, what I did is I come over here and let's actually create some UVs. So I'm going to drop down a UV texture node like so. And I want to set this up so that we actually add UVs to all these points here. All right. I want to actually UV these guys. And you can see by default, we actually get some UVs in the UV editor here. And that's just because the UV texture node has these default settings. What I want to do is I want to set this to arc length spline. All right. And then I want to rotate it 90 degrees like so. All right. But then I also want to get the, the length of the actual curve. All right. So I, I need to know how long of a distance do we travel along this particular spline here. Okay. And to do that, we use the arc length 
method. So we say arc length. And this requires a couple of arguments, okay? So inside of the parentheses, it's looking for a string. And this string basically is a path to a node that's inside of your network somewhere. Inside of, you know, anywhere here inside of uh, Houdini, you can pull in data from different nodes. All right. What I like to do is I like to utilize kind of a short form. And basically what I do is I put in a zero. And that represents this first input. If this had two inputs, we could have, you know, we could put a, a one in here for the second input. Zero is always that first input on these nodes there. All right. So after that zero, I'm now pulling in all the data that's being generated from this node. All right. So all that data is coming into this node down here. And what we're going to do is we need to put in three floats here. All right. And those three floats, if you come down here to the documentation, it's telling us that we need to put in a prim number right here for the usage and the start U position and the stop U position. So in this case, our prim number is zero because if we take a look at our primitive numbers over here, we only have one. All right, so we just say zero. And then the length of a curve is determined by its length between zero and all the way to one, which is all the way around the curve. All right, so then all we need to do is just type in uh, zero and one and, and the parentheses there. All right, cool. So now if I go back to my UV view, you can see I have the curve all UV'd out. So now it's ready for being UV'd. Very cool. OK, with that, what I want to do now is I want to drop down a copy and transform node. So we're going to do copy and transform. I'm going to feed the result from this UV texture node into this copy node here. And what I can do is I can actually kind of recreate what the revolve node was doing. But this will give me more control over how my UVs are laid out. And I'll show you here in just a little bit. OK, so what I'm going to do is make a bunch of copies up here. All right. And what, what I can do is I can come down to this rotate area right here in the Y direction. All right, so this is the Y direction. And I can start to expand it outwards like so. So I'm saying every copy, we want to rotate this amount right here. All right, so to fully replicate how the revolve node works, what we need to do is we need to basically divide 360 degrees or a full circle, right, by the total number of copies that we're making. All right, so let's do that and see if that works. So we're going to say 360, okay, divided by this particular expression. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on the label here. I'm going to say copy this parameter. I'm going to come down in here where, where we are writing our expression, and I'm going to say paste relative references. All right, and then hit Enter. And look at that. We now have the perfect angle. So if I were to click on this little label right here, you can see 28.9 degrees is perfect angle for 10 copies. All right, so if I increase this, you can see that 28.9 is still the perfect rotation angle for this, okay? Perfect. How cool is that? So at this point, we can go in and we can actually skin all these guys. So you can see skin. And look at that. We actually have our pumpkin mesh. How cool is that? Now, you'll notice that we actually have one that's missing, and that's because we're literally just going to, we're copying just enough profiles here to get to the end here, but we need one more right where the start is. All right, so what I need to do is just subtract one. So we're gonna say subtract one for my number of copies. And now look at our skin node, and look at that. Completely replicated the revolve node. So let's reverse all that. All right, and there we go. We now have the start of our pumpkin. And if I take a look at my UVs, you can see that our UVs didn't do anything. All right. But if you look at the amount of primitives, it's basically that all the UVs are just stacked out right on top of each other. What we need to do is we need to manually move each one of those profiles UVs over an X. And we need to keep it normalized in space here. All right. So what I'm going to do is close out this lecture. And in the next lecture, we're going to cover how to generate the UVs from this procedurally. Thanks so much.